This episode is dedicated to Riley Sims, a handsome, handsome cowboy with a fantastic beard from Sheridan, Wyoming. And he doesn't know a darn thing about what I'm going to talk about or much of anything else. But he's a really good guy, and he's my friend, so I'm dedicating an episode to him. Uh, jokes aside, somebody asked me about rain chains, about their function and how they work, why we have them. Um, so we'll talk about rain chains a little bit. I'm going to start this conversation with the fact that I don't use rain chains a lot. I have them on a handful of bits, uh, this particular bit. I have these rain chains on this bit because they're original and this is a really old, uh, really old bit and I just didn't take them off. Um, but anyway, so we'll talk about rain chains and their function. So I've heard people talk about, they say, uh, they say, well, rain chains are to keep, are to keep your uh, bridle reins from getting wet when your horse drinks. And I say, no, nah, not really. And they say, well, that's what Grandpa said. And I say, uh, well, what did Grandpa do? What, what, what did Grandpa do for a living? Was, was he a cowboy? And I say, no, he was a railroad man. And I say, you know, I'm not going to argue with your Grandpa, but my Grandpa was an orchard man. He didn't know a damn thing about any of this. So uh, let's not necessarily just go off of what Grandpa said. So you think about these rain chains, and I'm just going to argue against the water part for a second here. You think about these rain chains, and they've been around for forever. This isn't just early California. This is this is clear back into Spain and into the the Moorish tradition, and and farther back even, um, heck, even into the Greeks and the Macedonians used rain chains. Uh, at that time, iron was really really expensive and really hard to come by. Uh, especially now if we're talking about these kind of California bridles in early California, that was the farthest bastion of civilization from the Spanish um, colon, or, uh, empire. And so for them to get a piece of iron was, was really, really difficult and it was really expensive. Furthermore, those guys were building these chains by hand and I don't know if you've ever tried to build a chain by hand. I have. It's not fun to build these by hand uh, in a forge and that's not even accounting for mining the ore and smelting the ore and everything like that so a piece of chain like this that at one time was a really really valuable commodity is worth a heck of a lot more than a pair of rawhide reins were when this tradition started nowadays it's the opposite obviously but that's not the purpose of of the chain to keep that rawhide that rawhide is just an old dead cow and for so much of the history of the world, that was either super, super cheap or free. And not having TV or radio, I've been there myself, you, you braid because in the evenings you don't have anything else to do. So it's not to protect those reins at all. Uh, getting those reins wet won't hurt them. What these chains are, are intended to do is balance. Balance the bit and balance the signal that you're getting. So when you ride, get it over here where everybody can see, when you ride and you've got your reins on, you're going to have a belly in that, in that chain right there. You're not going to have a big old belly in your, in your rein, which would have everything hanging down like this. You're just going to have a belly in that chain. And these chains should be close to, if not equal weight, to the knots on your reins. Come here, reins. To these knots, they should be about the same weight as these chains. So what's going to happen is you have a belly in your rein. Now there's where the signal comes from as you lift the belly out of your rein. That's where some people call it a pre-signal and just because I'm a nerd that drives me nuts because you can't have a pre-signal. No such thing as a pre-signal. You have a signal and a secondary signal and a third signal and however many signals you need. But this is the first signal that that horse gets, if it's a bridle horse, that something's about to happen or, or the horse is expected to do something is that weight being lifted up out of those chains. And he could feel that. And so that's really what the purpose of the chains are, it is to have an equal weight to, those, to the knots on those reins so it'll hang with a belly like this. And then when you just 
barely lift on those reins, it'll lift a tiny bit and that horse will perk his ears and go, okay, something's about to happen, we're about to do something. He'll go to looking around for his work. Another part of these chains, I'm gonna try to do this with my hand and show how it works. And so when you're riding along and you've got a belly in your reins and it should be pretty equal, and that looks pretty equal, and your horse is taking a big old long walk, he's walking across the country, they're gonna jiggle like that. I'm not getting it to jiggle very good but they're gonna jiggle like that a little bit. And that horse is gonna feel that in his mouth and he's gonna try to set his body and balance his whole body and frame it up to where they move evenly like this, not like that. And so he's gonna find some self carriage that way to keep those reins from jiggling. He's gonna find the balance in those reins and keep them from jiggling. I've had horses in the past that uh, were really, really sensitive in the mouth and, and couldn't even stand the chains being like that. And so I've made, this is just saddle string, I've made rain chains out of that saddle string. It works the same way, you still get that signal as you lift them up. It works the same way, um, but then they don't move around as much as that horse is walking. And so some really, really sensitive horses work a lot better. A lot of times when you first start putting a horse in the bridle, a lot of times these, these saddle string chains will work better because they, they don't bother that horse as bad. Um, and another thing a guy can do with regular chains, and we always called this Portuguese your reins. Uh, I don't know if they actually do this in Portugal, but that's what we called it was Portuguese in your reins. You can take a, just a little old piece of string, a little piece of cotton string or something like that, and tie your reins together, or your chains together underneath there. And then they'll kind of they'll kind of find a little bit better balance that way and they won't be moving around so much. And I've done that a lot on young horses that were first starting into the bridle. Uh, and as they get used to it and as they figure it out, then you can take that piece of string off and cut it off. Most of my bits, like I say, I ride without chains. Um, and it's true, you, do, you lose a little on that signal. This, this is a lot more, well, it just, it just takes one of, the, one of the primary signals away from you because I'm pulling directly on this. Uh, the reason I do that is because most of what I use a spade for and most of how I work, uh, work with a spade, I'm not trying to make a true traditional spade bit horse because I'm a for-profit entity. I'm trying to make money and the, the truth of the matter is, is to make a real live spade bit bridle horse, uh, no matter how much you sell it for, you, you can't sell it for enough, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make. And so you can make them faster without using those chains and taking away that primary signal. And that's why I do it that way. Um, if I was gonna try to make a, a true blue spade bit horse, heck yeah, I'd use chains. But that's my thoughts on chains. Hi, Twist. That's my thoughts on chains. That's how I use them. That's what I know about them. And if anybody is, disagrees, then that's, that's fine. But I was asked, so that's what I know.